Cincinnati Reds played host to the Montreal Expos on Wednesday evening. In the bottom of the second inning, Sabo would get the Reds on the board with a two-run home run to left field off of Dennis Martinez. Sabo's 20th home run of the year, he picks up Paul O'Neill, RBI 62 and 63, and it's 2 to nothing Cincinnati. Top of the third inning, Tom Browning pitched a strong game for the Reds as he strikes out Delano the Shields with a runner on second base to end the third inning. Bottom of the third, Barry Larkin would put two more runs on the board with a triple to the right center field gap. Mariano Duncan and Hal Moore score for Cincinnati RBI 57 and 58 for Larkin, 4 0 Reds, 5 0 as Sabo drove in Larkin from third base with a base hit. Bottom of the fourth inning, Mariano Duncan steps up to the plate and he slams a two run homer to left field. Home run number five for Mariano Duncan. He picks up Tom Browning and that gave the Reds a 7 0 lead. Hal Morris followed up Duncan's home run with a solo blast of his own and it's 8 0 Cincinnati. Top of the fifth, Tim Wallach with a solo home run to left field. His 12th of the year, and it's 8-1 to one to Cincinnati through four and a half innings. 9-1 to one now in the bottom of the sixth inning when Mariano Duncan will strike again. This one, a two-run homer to left field, and he also picks up Tom Browning once again. His second home run of the ball game, sixth of the year, 11-1 to one Reds. Top of the seventh, Yvonne Calderon will lead off the inning with a solo homer off of Browning. Calderon's 18th of the year, RBI number 72, and it's 11-2 Cincinnati through 7. The Expos get a run in the ninth inning, but the Cincinnati Reds defeat the Expos 11-3. Tom Browning, the winner, he's 13-8. Martinez, the loser, he's 12-9. It was a comfortable eight-game lead in the Western Division of the American League. In the bottom of the first inning, it's Shane Mack here with a nice diving catch, robbing Carlos Baerga of a base hit. That ended the first inning. With the Twins up one to nothing, we go to the top of the third. Brian Harper with an RBI double down the left field line. Ken Herbeck will come in to score easily, and the Twins led it two to nothing. Some more great defense from the Twins in the bottom of the third. With first and second, it's Greg Gagne going deep in the hole to throw to Pagliarulo, the great stretch, and they force Felix Fermin at third base. In the bottom of the fifth inning, Ken Herbeck going for the foul ball. He will miss it. And he lands in the photographer's booth head first. With the score still 2 0 Minnesota, we go now to the bottom of the sixth inning. Mark Witten against David West. And Witten drives this deep to left field for a two run homer. For Witten, his ninth of the season, RBI's number 43 and 44. And the game was tied at two. Going now to the top of the seventh inning, Brian Harper with a looping single of center field. Randy Bush comes around to score and the Twins led it 3-2. to two. In the top of the eighth inning, a microcosm of the Indian season this year. Jeff Manto with the error. Larkin going to second base. Witten's throw hits Larkin on the back and goes into left field. Larkin the third. Two errors on the play. The Indians with five errors on the night. Here comes the fifth error. Randy Bush with the RBI single to center field scoring Larkin. And Gonzalez in center field kicks the ball to the right field. Bush winds up on second base. And the Twins led it 4-2. to two. In the bottom of the ninth inning, Tom Kelly calls on Rick Aguilera to close it out. He gets Mike Aldretti to ground to Ken Herbeck to end the ball game. The Twins win it 4-2. to two. The winner, David West, 4-3. and three. The loser, Eric King, 5-8. and eight. Aguilera gets his 35th save. Toronto Blue Jays look to sweep the Baltimore Orioles in a three-game set on Wednesday evening in Baltimore. And in the top of the first inning, Carter got things off on the right foot for Toronto with a double into the right field corner off of Ben McDonald. Devon White and Roberto Alomar score RBI 90 and 91 for Carter. Carter gets tagged out between a second and third. But the Blue Jays take a 2 to nothing lead. Bottom of the fourth inning, Tom Candiotti looking strong with the knuckleball. Gets Glenn Davis on the high knuckleball. With the second out of the fourth inning. Top of the fifth inning now. Ben McDonald hasn't allowed a run since the first inning. And here he'll strike out Manny Lee in the fifth. And it's still two to nothing Toronto through five innings of play at Baltimore. That would be the same score in the top half of the seventh inning when McDonald will come up with a great play. Perhaps the play of the day as he'll dive backwards after Manny Lee's ground ball back to the box and while sitting throws him out at first base to end the inning. McDonald jogs off, standing ovation, another look, 
from the same angle as McDonald dives backwards after Manny Lee's ground ball. Bear hands it and is still sitting down, throws him out at first base. In the top of the eighth inning, a little lunacy as McDonald will strike out Candy Maldonado to end the eighth inning, and he pumps his fist in delight. He comes running off the mound, dangling his right thumb. He apparently dislocated it either on the pitch or the pump after the strikeout. But nonetheless, he leaves the game with the injured right thumb. Two outs now in the top of the ninth inning when Manny Lee will flare the ball to a right field as he breaks his bat. Billy Ripken goes back and he can't make the play. Kelly Gruber scored 3-0 Toronto. That would be the final score. Tom Hankey came in and worked a perfect ninth inning for Candiotti, who went eight innings. As the Toronto Blue Jays win 3 to nothing, Candiotti allowed only one hit in the ball game, and that came in the very first inning. As Joe Orsolak will rip a line drive just off of Kelly Gruber's glove and goes into left field for a base hit. A couple of inches, and it would have been caught by Gruber, and a possible no hitter by Candiotti. But the Blue Jays win 3 to nothing. Candiotti, the winner. McDonald, the loser. Henke, his 31st save. On the New York Mets. In the top of the third inning, though, the Mets get on the board first. Chuck Carr with the RBI single to left field. Kevin Elster will come around to score, and the Mets led it 1 to nothing. In the bottom of the fifth inning, the Braves get on the board. Greg Olson with the double to right center field. Coming around to score from second base would be Jeff Blauser. As Chuck Carr pulls up lame with a pulled hamstring, Blauser comes around to score, and this ties the game at one. For Olsen, RBI number 36, and Chuck Carr had to leave the game. Darryl Boston replaced him. Still in the bottom of the fifth inning, the Tomahawks are out tonight. Tom Glavin would help his own course with this single to center field. Coming in to score would be Olsen, and the Braves took a 2-1 to one lead. Tom Glavin on the mound for the Atlanta Braves tonight. And he is shooting for his 17th victory of the season. Here in the top of the sixth inning, he strikes out Keith Miller. He has four Ks through seven innings. And it looks like he will get his 17th victory. In the bottom of the sixth inning, Brian Hunter with the RBI single to left center field. Terry Pendleton will come around to score. And Atlanta took a 3-1 to one lead. Frank Viola very angry in the dugout after the inning. He felt that Carrion should have caught that bloop single by Hunter. Viola smashes the bat, sits back down on the bench, then he gets back up. He's about to smash something on the wall. He thinks twice and just leaves into the clubhouse. And finally in the ninth inning, Glavin gets Greg Jeffries to pop up to right field to end the ball game. The Atlanta Braves for now are in first place, a half game up on the L.A. Dodgers. Tom Glavin, 17-8 and the winner. Frank Sour Music, Viola the loss. He's 12-12. Kansas City, it's the Royals taking on the Chicago White Sox, losers of seven in a row. In the top of the second inning with the White Sox up one to nothing, it's recently recalled Sammy Sosa with the RBI single to right field. Lance Johnson scores. The White Sox lead it two to nothing. Still in the top of the second, Tim Raines with the RBI single to right field. Sammy Sosa will score from second base, and the White Sox had a three to nothing lead. Going now to the top of the third inning, it's Craig Grayback with the RBI double to left center field. Dan Pasqua would come in to score from second base, and the White Sox built up a 4 to nothing lead. Still in the top of the third inning, it's Ozzy Gijan here with the RBI single under David Howard's glove. Coming around to score would be Grayback, and the White Sox lead at 5-0. But in the bottom of the fourth inning, the Royals explode off of Greg Hibbard with the bases loaded. It's Tim Spear. With the double to left center field, Bill Pakoda, Harvey Pulliam, and Terry Shumpert all come in to score, and it was a 5-3 ball game. Still in the bottom of the fourth, George Bett with a fly ball to left field. Tim Raines, who should have caught this ball, misses it. It bounces around in the corner. Coming around to score would be Tim Spear and Kirk Gibson. George Brett with the stand-up triple, and the game was tied at 5. Going to the top of the eighth inning, Robin Ventura with the RBI single to right field. Sammy Sosa comes around to score, and the White Sox led it 6-5. to five. But in the bottom of the eighth inning, the Royals get that run back. Brian McCray with the RBI single scoring Terry Shumpert, and the game was tied at 6. In the bottom of the ninth, with two men out, Cromartie comes through with the RBI single to left field. 
Bill Pacota scores the game-winning run, and the Royals defeat the White Sox 7-6, handing them their eighth straight loss. In New York, the Yankees were showcasing their number one draft pick, Brian Taylor. Without so much as a major league win to his credit, the 19-year-old signed a two-year deal in the neighborhood of one and a half million dollars. Out on the field against the Rangers, the game began with a whimper, not a bang. Alvaro Espinosa's chop is good for a single and his 26 RBI, scoring Mel Hall for the one nothing lead. Later in the second, it appears that Bernie Williams is out on strikes as Al Clark appears to ring him up. The rookie takes it silently, going back to the bench when Clark calls him back, much to Bobby Valentine's chagrin. Then Williams makes the most of his reprieve and new life, delivering the next Brian Bohannon pitch into left field, scoring Hensley Mullins and Alvaro Espinosa. RBIs 22 and 23 make it 3 nothing Yanks. That was all for starter Brian Bohannon. He was relieved by Wayne Rosenthal, who had similar problems getting Williams out. In the bottom of the fifth, Williams crushes the high inside pitch well down the right field line and into the upper deck. Home run number three on the season for Williams. His third RBI on the night, his 24th on the season, made it 4 to nothing Yankees as the rookie got razzed in the dugout later on. It was 5 nothing in the top of the seventh when Gino Petralli, who homered for the first time in two years and 544 at-bats on Monday, made it two home runs in three nights. He homers for the second time in the series against the Yankees and puts an end to Wade Taylor's shutout bid, making the score 5-1. to one. That was the final as Petralli's second home run was the only score by Texas. In the top of the ninth, Pat Kelly helps reliever Steve Farr he makes a diving stop on the Steve Bouchel grounder, saving a run. Final was 5-1. to one. Winning pitcher Wade Taylor is 7-7. Seven seven. Brian Bohannon loses and drops to 3-1. Game this Wednesday, Carlos Quintana gets things going in the top of the first. There's no score. He hits a triple to center field over Dave Henderson's head, and it goes against the wall. Jody Reed comes in to score, making it one to nothing Boston in the top of the first inning. In the bottom of the third inning, the A's come back. The score 2-1 to one Boston, Jose Canseco comes to bat. He hits a line single to right field off of Red Sox pitcher Matt Young. Mike Fordick comes in to score for the A's. Canseco gets RBI number 93 on the season, and he gives the A's a tie against the Red Sox. It's 2-2. Dave Henderson comes up after him, and this makes the score 3-2 Oakland. He hits a single to right field. Scott Brocious comes in to score, and in the top of the fourth, the A's hold on to that 3-2 lead. In the top of the fourth inning, man on second base, Dave Stewart on the mound for the Athletics. He strikes out Tom Bernanski to end the inning and the threat. He won eight innings, striking out six batters. It's his eighth straight win decision against the Red Sox, 11, including the postseason. Four to two now, bases full, two outs in the fifth. Brooke Jacoby with a gapper to left center field. Mike Greenwell and Ellis Burks look at each other as the ball drops between them. Ricky Henderson, Jose Canseco, Terry Steinbach all came in to score. And the A's lead 7-2. Bottom of the seventh inning, a kind of goofy play here is Dave Henderson with the foul behind the plate. Tony Pena goes back after it, makes the catch in front of the wall. And then Pena acts kind of strange at Dave Henderson. Man on, bottom of the eighth inning, Mark McGuire with a two-run homer to center field off of Dan Petrie. Homer number 19 for McGuire. And the A's win 9-3 over the Red Sox. Stewart, the winner, he's 10-8. Matt Young, the loser, he drops to 3-5. and five. As once again, the Oakland Athletics defeat the Red Sox by a score of 9-3. As the Angels took on the Detroit Tigers, pitching was the order of the day. For the Angels, it was Jim Abbott starting and going 7 in a third scoreless innings, striking out 6 along the way. In the top of the fourth, he collects one of his strikeouts, setting down Alan Trammell. He fooled the shortstop badly as the bat sailed up high into the box seats. Abbott was opposed by the Tigers' Bill Gullickson, looking to become the Major League's first 17-game winner. Gullickson collected his third straight complete game in a row, but it was in a losing effort as he drops the 1-0 decision. He struck out three, and here in the bottom of the fourth, he ended it, setting Gary Gaetti down on strikes. Jim Abbott helped his own cause here in the top of the sixth with Travis Fryman on first. He jumps to snare the Trammell comebacker, Goes to second base to get the force out. Abbott went on to get the win and moved to 14-8 and eight on the season. The game's only run came in the bottom of the six when Luis Polonia sliced a double down the left field line. That brought home Dick Schofield with the winning run. 
The Angels took this game one to nothing on Polonia's 46th RBI of the season. Bill Gullickson took the loss to drop to 16 and seven on the season as three Angel pitchers combined on the four hit shutout. Brian Harvey pitched the ninth striking out Mickey Tettleton to secure his 33rd save on the season and his 100th save as an Angel. California takes it one to nothing. Johnson at Dodger Stadium on Wednesday night as the Dodgers hosted the Pittsburgh Pirates. Barry Bonds on third base, one out in the second, when Don Slott rips a double to left field into the corner. Bonds will come in to score easily, and the Pirates take a one to nothing lead. Top of the third inning now, Gary Reedus will make it two to nothing, as he'll hit a solo homer to left field off of Bobby Ojeda. For Reedus, it's his seventh home run of the year, RBI number 20. And the Pirates take a two to nothing lead. And they led 3 to nothing on a sacrifice fly after two and a half innings of play. Bottom of the sixth inning, Doug Drabeck pitching a good game for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Strikes out Cal Daniels, his third strikeout victim, through six innings. Bottom of the seventh inning now, nobody out. First and third for the Dodgers. When Mike Sosha hits a ground ball back to the mound, Drabeck goes to second for one. The Bucks turned the double play, but Darryl Strawberry scored from third, 3-1 to one Pirates. Top of the eighth inning, Barry Bonds will give the Bucks a three-run lead as he'll double off of John Candelaria to left center field. Bobby Bonilla will race around from first base to score RBI number 93 for Bonds. And the Pirates have a 4-1 to one lead over the Los Angeles Dodgers in the eighth inning. But that all changed in the home half of the eighth with two on and nobody out. Brett Butler will hit a three-run homer off of Doug Drabeck into the right field seats as Bobby Bonilla can't get to it. As he makes an effort, but fans get in the way. The railing gets in the way. It goes for a three-run homer for Brett Butler, his second of the year. Dave Hansen, Chris Gwynn in, and we're tied at four. Another look at the try by Bobby Bonilla, but he just can't come up with the ball, and we're tied at four. Tom Baby out in Candlestick Park on Wednesday night where the San Francisco Giants are taking on the Chicago Cubs. In the bottom of the first, Robbie Thompson puts the Cubs on top one to nothing as he launches his 17th home run and 40th RBI on the season to put the Giants up one to nothing against Cubs starter Mike Bielecki. Score was tied at one all in the top of the fourth when Mike Bielecki aided his own cause. With the bases loaded, he sends a bloop single to right field. That scores George Bell and put the Cubs up 2-1. to one. Next batter was Chico Walker, and he slices a ball to left field that just eludes a diving Kevin Mitchell. The ball gets past him and to the wall for an inside-the-park grand slam home run for Walker. Scoring before Walker on the play were George Bell, Dwight Smith, and Mike Bielecki, and the Cubs had a commanding 6-1 to one lead for their pitcher, who was looking for his 50th career win. As we take a look at Kevin Mitchell, who gamble out in left field, didn't pay off. The score was 6-2 to two in the top of the fifth. Sean Dunstan at the plate. He triples over shortstop and into the left center field gap. Dwight Smith scored as Dunstan extended his hitting streak to 14 games and the Cub lead to 7-2. to two. The Giants came back with a pair of runs in the fifth and sixth innings. In the fifth, it was Willie McGee singling up the middle, scoring Jose Uribe, who had singled home a run earlier in the inning. The score was 7-4 to four Cubbies. In the sixth, it was Uribe coming to the four again, collecting his second and third RBIs on the night. He triples against reliever Les Lancaster. The ball goes over and outstretched Andre Dawson at the wall. Home to score Mike Kingry and Kurt Monwaring. And all of a sudden, the Cubby lead was trimmed to seven to six. In the bottom of the seventh, the Giants threatened again. They loaded the bases, but then Welly McGee went fishing for strike three and out three as Les Lancaster got the Cubs to the eighth with the one-run lead. In the top of the ninth, it was Andre Dawson providing a valuable insurance run for the Cubs. He hammers his 23rd home run off the foul pole in left field. It's fair, it's good. Home run, 8-6 Cubbies as Dawson takes Dave Rigetti downtown. It's now in the bottom of the ninth. Cubs trying to win it.